Now, what I suggested at the beginning and have, have developed a little bit is uh, that the basis of all human rights thinking must be the, the a sense of the dignity and worth of human beings as such. But nevertheless, more is involved than that uh, because uh, if we lived in a perfect world, uh, presumably there'd be no need to talk about human rights. We have to talk about human rights because uh, in so many ways human rights are violated. And put it in Christian terms, uh, we are not only created in the image of God, uh, but we violate uh, that image in other people and in ourselves, and therefore we need laws to protect us from the worst consequences uh, of that. And therefore, uh, rights and law has been a very developing process throughout uh, history. I mentioned Magna Carta, but we could go on beyond that to 1354 when Edward III introduced the important principle of due process of law. And then after the Civil War in the 17th century, there was a gradual extension, the idea of right to religious freedom in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, the right to, of everybody to fully participate in the political process, and so on. Now, we might think that after this long historical development with the advent of democracy, uh, there's actually less need to talk about human rights, at least within a democratic society. But that is very far from being the case for a reason which Alex de Tocqueville pointed out many times ago, uh, and that is uh, the tyranny or potential tyranny of the majority. Uh, democratic government is in practice the rule by the majority as measured by a particular system. But uh, where there's a majority, there are always minorities. Uh, and given the propensity of human beings to oppress uh, one another, that minority needs to be protected uh, even within a dem democratic uh, so society. Um, and therefore, it's always seemed to me that absolutely fundamental to democracy are human rights, and in some way, even more important uh, than democracy are human rights. In some of the non-democratic countries uh, in the Middle East, say, if you ask yourself, would you rather uh, that they had a proper rule of law which fully recognized human rights as we understand them, or the kind of democratic system uh, that we have in the West. If you choose between those, I wonder which you would choose. Of course, they ought to go together, but I think if I had to choose, I'd rather that first of all we saw human, all human rights properly uh, respected. Now, human beings uh, need to be protected from one another, hence we have uh, the rule of law, but uh, we also need to be protected uh, against governments. And one of the great impetuses, impetuses for the great human rights movement after 1948, of course, was to protect human beings against governments. With the experience of Nazi Germany and Stalin uh, in, in Russia, it was individuals who needed to be uh, protected, not so much against one another, but against tyrannical uh, government. And I think that's given uh, rise uh, to a really a rather brilliant phrase by Ronald Dworkin, where he describes human rights as political trumps. As he's written, individual rights are political trumps held by individuals. Individuals have rights when for some reason a collective good is not sufficient justification for denying them what they wish as individuals to have or do, or not a sufficient justification for imposing some loss or injury upon them. If someone has a right to something, then it is wrong for the government to deny it to him, even though it would be in the general interest to do so. And that is absolutely the nub of the, the, the matter. And of course, it's particularly relevant to the modern world. 